recent backpacking trip with my son, I got up at 6.30 in the morning to search for a moose I had seen the day previous. However, I didn't see the moose, so I turned my observation to other things going on around me. One of the things that stood out on this trip were the squirrels. They were very busy trying to get as many pine cones as they could to prepare for the upcoming winter that was just around the corner. I had a great vantage point as I was up on a rock cliff, so I was pretty much level with this guy. Now, of course, they dropped the pine cones down to the forest floor. They would run down, gather up their pine cones, and take it back to their burrow. Now, after a while, I relocated from the cliff face right down to the lake. And as I was sitting there observing, I caught some movement on the other side of the lake. What I saw were three deer that were running around, although they were running around very sporadically, very strange. So I was sitting here trying to figure this out. What were they running from? Were there hikers up early this morning? Was there something chasing them? But as you can see here, she's running around the tree. There are circular paths that really make no sense. And as I continued to watch these guys, it finally dawned on me what was going on. This was some sort of deer tag. Essentially, they were playing. This was kind of fun behavior to witness as I've never really seen it before. Of the many years I've observed deer, I really haven't seen this type of behavior. Later in the day when attempting to film, ah. <laughs> the squirrels decided to make this process more difficult. Did you hear that one hit the tarp? <laughs> He's dropping the pine cones on us. <laughs> huh? The squirrels dropping the pine cones on us. I think this was some sort of squirrel practical <laughs> joke. You want a stick, tie it to a tree, and I just got hit on the shoulder by the pine cone <laughs> from the squirrel. Later that morning, my son and I went out for a hike. We came across this talus field and it just had a whole bunch of little fur balls running around it. Specifically, marmots and pikas. Yellow belly marmots are large burrowing rodents. They're about the size of a house cat. These guys live in colonies about 10 to 20 individuals. They dig elaborate mazes of burrows underneath high elevation meadows and rocky fields. They spend most of their time on the ground. Marmots are omnivores and eat grasses, flowers, insects, and if the occasion presents itself, bird eggs. Marmots spend over half of their lives in hibernation. They enter their burrows in around September to early October and don't emerge again until the following April or May. The colony members will huddle closely together in the burrows and these burrows are insulated with hay. Of course, this will help to reduce some of the energy costs associated with hibernating. 
Marmots have important adaptations for personal energy conversation. For me, I found this really interesting. But they each build large fat stores that will get them through roughly 200 plus days of hibernating. And when they do this, the body temperature of a marmot can fall 41 degrees. So an active heartbeat is 180 to 200 beats per minute, and this decreases to an average of 30 beats per minute. And marmots also need to take only about one or two breaths per minute during this hibernation phase. Now this is behavior that I've seen many times when I've run into these, but while feeding out in the open, one marmot stands as a sentinel and they will whistle sharply when danger is near. This will give the other colony members a chance to escape and they'll just hit the nearest burrow entry and go in and hide. They typically live in habitats such as steeps, alpine meadows, pastures, gravel covered fields and forest edges. Now in the places I travel, I typically see them in the same areas as the pika. Now these little pikas are about the size of a chipmunk, but they're related to the rabbit family. They are very vocal animals and use both calls and songs to communicate with others and to protect their territories. Pikas live in colonies often connected by burrow mazes underneath these rocky areas. What I find really interesting about pikas is they do not hibernate, so they spend most of their short alpine summers gathering food for the winter ahead. Now this is a lot of energy expended in gathering large quantities of plants in their mouths and scurrying back to their designated storage areas called haystacks but they'll put them out in the sun to help the plants dry. One pika must gather enough food to fill a bathtub. Now what's funny about these little guys is they'll actually go to a neighbor's haystack and steal from their haystack and take it back to their own. So when winter arrives, the pikas will bring all of their haystacks into their dens and will remain in the burrows most of the winter.